The town of Junction City sits near the southern end of the Willamette Valley, about 12 miles north of Oregon's second largest city, Eugene. With a current population of around 5,000 people, the town is known for its Scandinavian ancestry and car dealerships. But how did Junction City begin? And how did a little town start off being called a city? To answer these questions, we need to travel back in time to look at Junction City the way it used to be, a time before the Scandinavians came as immigrant farmers, a time when the state of Oregon was just beginning, a time before Junction City even existed. In the early days of Oregon, the transporting of goods and people was much different than today. Wagons and the stage lines were a primary way to ship and move people from place to place. But there were few roads, and the ones that did exist were muddy in the rainy season and dusty in dry times. The Willamette River also provided transportation going down river to Portland. Steamboats carried much cargo and passengers up and down the river. Towns sprung up close to the shores, but ships would often run aground and towns would sometimes flood, but still the river provided the main support for a growing new state. Locally, one of the towns that grew was Lancaster, Oregon, about two miles north of where Junction City is today. Lancaster was one of the oldest towns in Oregon and was even considered as a site for the state capital, which eventually ended up as Salem. At that time, Lancaster sat right by the river but over the years, the river rerouted itself and moved about a mile to the east, making Lancaster nothing more than a future stop in the road. But in the late 1860s, Ben Holliday, a business pioneer who made a fortune in creating stage routes, branched out into a new money-making venture. His plan was to build a railroad from Portland to San Francisco, California. Much of the work was done by Chinese immigrants who built the line just as they had the Transcontinental Railroad. The line would need to cross the Willamette River in important spots and one of them was decided to go just before Lancaster in Harrisburg. A bridge was built and finished in 1870. Holiday also wanted to create a roundhouse, a turntable, and a shop to work on trains and decided Harrisburg would be a great spot. One piece of land was in a floodplain and a second was too expensive. He started looking for a better area and wanted to go towards Lancaster. He found a good location about four miles south of Harrisburg and began building the buildings necessary. Holiday saw this as where he thought would be the central point of his railroad, where his east side line coming from Portland would meet his west side line heading south to California. Thinking this would be an important stopping point, he named the town Junction City, even though at the time there was no city or even a town. The year was 1871 and Junction City was born. Eventually a town grew up around the railroad. Many services were built including a hotel, rooming and boarding houses, saloons, as well as a large granary and other railroad services, such as a water tower for the steam engines. The town began to grow 
with the main area being Front Street, with the buildings all facing east toward the rail line and growing westward to include houses and other services. There was even a grand opera house built with thoughts of this truly becoming a city of importance. Junction City was becoming grand. Ben Holiday's original railroad company was called ONC Railroad or Oregon California Railroad. Later, it would fail and be replaced by the Southern Pacific Line, which ran the operations until the 1940s. There were many mishaps in the early days of railroad, including some major train wrecks that happened right here in Junction City. Most notably was a terrible wreck in 1911. At its heyday, the Southern Pacific had passenger trains stop 10 times a day in Junction City, and the town became an important service stop where switching of cars, taking on water, and other maintenance tasks were performed. There also was a telegraph office. Freight trains made frequent stops to load and unload goods and take on water for steam. Many railroad workers lived in Junction City. Also, at times, important people stopped in Junction City. Several presidents made speeches from the back of trains, including Teddy Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson. But even though its roots were with the railroad, it becoming Oregon's Nick Chicago never happened. There was talk of it becoming a great railroad intersection with a line running over the mountains to eastern Oregon and another to the coast meeting with the existing line running to the north and south. Unfortunately, after a lot of whining and dining, Eugene became the major stopping point and Junction City became merely a stop on the line. Junction City was to see one more major railroad boom. In 1907, James Jerome Hill, who was nicknamed the Empire Builder, developed a plan to build an electric train route from Portland to the state capital, Salem, with stops along the way. By 1910, the railroad was extended all the way to Eugene with a planned stop and depot to be built in Junction City. This added a second rail line in Junction City that can still be seen going down Holly Street. It was originally projected to go all the way to Ashland near the California border. This line became a main transportation means until it finally ended in June of 1933. Beginning with Henry Ford's making automobiles affordable, highways began slowly to replace trains as the main transportation of the day. While many of the remnants of Junction City's railroad boom are long gone through fire or urban renewal, some of it still remains. The Oregon Electric Depot is still part of Junction City today and is currently the site of the Rodeo Steakhouse. Similar depots are in Eugene, where the Oregon Electric Station restaurant still thrives, and in Albany, the depot is a pizza parlor called Sedici's. Also, still in existence is one of the rural depots that stopped at Meadowview Lane. It is not weathered as well, but still is a familiar site on Highway 99 to Eugene. And the biggest reminder of our railroad days are the trains themselves. The companies have changed from the Southern and Union Pacific till 1947, to the Spokane Portland from 1947 to 1970, the Burlington Northern till 1995, and the Portland Western Railroad ever since. And although it doesn't stop, Amtrak still runs its passenger train through the town twice a day. But Junction City still holds dear its railroad heritage. In 1980, the town accepted the gift of engine number 418, a 1904 Finnish locomotive that was a major exhibit and gift from Finland for the Oregon Centennial Celebration in 1959. The locomotive can be found at the corner of 4th and Holly Streets. It stands still as a proud reminder of both of Junction City's important historical roots. Scandinavia, and the railroad. So the town of Junction City never became the city its founders imagined, but it was born from a dream and still endures today. A proud but small railroad town in the heart of the Willamette Valley. It is the city that never was, a railroad junction that never took place, but still, it is our home. <laughs>